Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the Daily Dope Show. I'm your uh, friend, Brian Strong, over here. My new hat. Um, so, I got to do this story. Uh, although I think I've done plenty of commenting about this so far. And, uh, you know, just first of all, again, I'm going to reiterate that Sometimes you might find my rhetoric to be a little bit over the top, you know, like I might say something like, uh, for example, we're talking about this driving thing. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that smoking cannabis and as far as does it impair a person's driving, I'm going to just go ahead and say it's up to the individual, but it doesn't impair pe- it doesn't impair you the way alcohol does and what i mean by that is that there's no measurable way to tell if somebody is too high to fucking drive it's just that simple i mean you you can make any argument you want about oh well this person had 50 nanograms in their system or this or that you know and i can show you a thing that shows that you know somebody that uses medical marijuana 50 nanograms and they're not even high at all all right I can, you can take somebody that's never smoked weed before in their entire life and smoke them down with like dabs. Eventually that person's not going to be like, okay, I'm not too paranoid and stoned anymore to drive and they'll be able to drive and there will be no residual interference. Like with alcohol, they say, oh, you know, for every time you drink a beer, you better wait one hour for that to wear off. That's fucking bullshit. There's no science behind that. And it definitely doesn't help you when a breathalyzer tells the cop you have this much blood in your system or alcohol in your blood or whatever. So, you know, there's so many arguments about people driving stoned that it just, it just makes you like your head spin. But the bottom line is, is there's no fucking science to even say that, you know, X amount of THC equals this amount of impairment like alcohol can be demonstrated clearly. Now, do I think that the alcohol laws go a little too far with the 0.08 minimum uh, or max, you know, maximum allowed alcohol blood alcohol content? I really don't care. Uh, to me, it, it doesn't really matter. I personally am not affected by this as I don't drink and drive because I have DUIs in the past, so I just simply don't do it. And <clears throat> when it comes to uh, you know blowing a breathalyzer test. I, I, I could argue for the people on the point eight or whatever, but the thing is, is with alcohol, I don't have a problem with the overabundance of caution. Yeah, I simply don't, I don't have a problem with it because people are fucking dying every time you, you know, blink from someone crashing into somebody drinking and driving. Alcohol in general is a killer of 80,000 people a year. And that's not counting like so many other things that are caused the alcohol causes people to die from that's just like direct death count you know we talk about the opioid epidemic like it's the biggest epidemic in the world opioids are still under sixty thousand a year or right around there <clears throat> i mean it's it, is it a problem to be freaking out about yeah but why is it that nobody says anything about this eighty thousand fucking alcohol deaths a year or however many time you know twenty thousand ish crashes car crashes a year that are alcohol related how about the you know countless amounts of uh days lost at work and all them social costs that you always talk about none of there's none of that with weed but we're specifically talking about driving and you're gonna see articles over the next few months about people taking these cases to court where they're getting charged with driving while high And there's already a shitload of cases in the pipeline. And I've seen people getting manslaughter charges for wrecks that weren't even their fault because they tested positive for marijuana days after they last smoked. And this is the kind of shit that's going on, man. This is the new tickets. Like the cops are like, oh, fuck, man, you're taking away one of our biggest cash cows, marijuana. What are you going to give us? Um, Well, we'll give you stone driving. What? I mean, it's in case after case, Michigan's no different. Everywhere where there's a legalization effort, the people behind it want to like, you know, they want to bridge the divide between prohibitionists and people that want to legalize and they want to 
they want to be friendly to the people that would otherwise vote against it. So one of the things they throw out there as like a as like a sacrificial lamb is like they they emphasize, oh, we do not promote driving stone. That's going to be illegal. Um, look, guys, driving while you're stoned is already fucking illegal in all 50 states, no matter how legal marijuana is. It's always been like that. If a cop pulls you over because you're driving like shit and they decide that marijuana is the only thing in your system that could be possibly causing that, even though most people just drive like shit anyway, um, then they can give you a fucking ticket for it. Just point blank. There's no two ways around it. Never has been, never will be. There's never, I mean, only in Arizona that I know of. Do they have what I call protections for stone drivers? And the reason that they have that is because, like I said about the science earlier, you can't have a zero tolerance situation where you're like, oh, five nanograms, we're going to give you a OUIL. Or I mean, a, that's an operating while under the influence of liquor specifically. So, or just an OUI, or they call it something different everywhere, driving under the influence of drugs. I mean, there's this, like, they make it sound like it's something. Like, you're fucking running into shit and crashing into shit constantly trying to drive down the road while you're fucking wasted on drugs. And I keep, I always argue, man, drugs, with most, even pharmaceutical drugs, unless you're fucking nodding out, you can pretty much drive a car. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not advocating for people to eat a bunch of pharmaceutical drugs and go out and drive, am I? No, I'm not. But you can't, it's, individuals have different tolerance levels and then what, what they can actually, their functionality. Like some people take a couple of Vicodins, they're on the couch for the rest of the day. Others can't get off the couch unless they take a couple of Vicodins. So you're, the idea that you're just going to snarl all these people that you think are stone driving or whatever, there's no science on any of it. The only real science is, is if the cop sees you driving all over the fucking road hitting shit, or whatever, or you already hit something, then, and only then, <laughs> can you demonstrate impairment. Because if you're not impaired, you're not impaired. And it's just that simple. So, anyway, there's people that go a little farther than that, as far as their rhetoric goes. You know, you have Dana Larson, big weed advocate in Canada. Um, <clears throat> and he says, stone drivers are safe drivers. In fact, using cannabis might even make you a safer driver. <clears throat> and my argument for that is that, yeah, a lot of people need to medicate before they get out on that road because driving can be stressful. It can be, it can cause anxiety. And quite frankly, uh, a lot of people need to medicate before driving. It's just the way it is especially if you have to like to drive through a lot of traffic or go on long journeys. Um, so that's my take on it being safer. Now that's not for everyone. I'm not saying, Hey everybody, here's a great way to be a great driver. I'm not, I'm not advocating for, you know, people to just willy nilly be smoking weed while driving either. It is what it is. But I, I am against any kind of idea that you can just swab somebody's cheek or take a blood sample or do a breathalyzer all these things have been proven to not be scientifically viable as far as like even collecting an accurate sample and saying that there's x amount of thc in, a, in somebody's system based on that it's not it's not science man there's no science saying that that's good to go and there's also no science saying that well this this level of thc means you're impaired that's just what they're saying because they know they can get the maximum amount of people going to court for this shit. And you will beat it. Go take it to court, have a good lawyer, pay your fucking money for all that, and you'll beat the ticket. I guarantee it. I'm going to guess that the cops aren't even going to show up on these fuckers to defend the ticket. All right, let's go ahead and read it. The effects of cannabis on driving have been extensively studied for decades. Research consistently shows that a typical cannabis use causes very little to no impairment to driving ability. In terms of public policy, the focus should remain on the real danger, which is alcohol. Cannabis impairs driving in very high doses, much higher than those usually taken by the vast majority of users. When alcohol users switch to cannabis, our roads get safer. Here's a summary from the past 25 years of studies showing that cannabis users are safe drivers. And by the way, 
this is a, an old article from way back in April, but since this article has been published, there have been, I think, at least three more studies to, I don't know about prove that you're safer, but prove that cannabis driving is no different than normal driving or the numbers don't, the, there is no numbers to, to justify uh, enforcement of this stone driving bullshit. And there definitely is no numbers to say that just because you legalize cannabis, there's going to be like a massive amount of new uh, traffic fatalities based on people driving stoned. That is totally bogus. That would assume a lot of things like a lot more people get smoke weed because you legalized. You could say a little more people, but the numbers don't even bear that out. And then you can also say, well, it's because, you know, people are, I don't know, just think it's better to do it safe or it's not illegal or something, whatever. The bottom line is, is none of that's true. And none of those statistics bear out. So in 1992, the U S department of transportation did a study analyzing blood from fatally injured drivers to see how drugs and alcohol affected collisions. They concluded that THC only drivers had a responsibility rate below uh, that of the drug free drivers. <laughs> so they were, they were at fault for the wreck less often than people that were on no drugs at all. While the difference was not statistically significant. Well, you know, the funny thing about that is, is when there is a little thing like that and it's going the other way, they fucking act like it is very significant. Oh, a million new people died from driving stoned. They'll say, you know, like based on nothing. There was no indication that cannabis by itself was the cause of fatal crashes. A year later, they confirmed this result with another study on driving simulators, which found that THC's adverse effects on driving performance appear relatively small. And let's not forget the actual on-the-road tests were in Arizona, Seattle, and I can't remember where else, but I want to say somewhere in Colorado. A local news person got together with some driving instructing teachers, some people, medical marijuana patients, and a cop. And they did a little test to see how bad this whole driving stone thing was. And none of them could say that it was really going to cause that big of a big deal. All right. In 1995, the Australia Road Research Unit did a major study into cannabis effects on actual driving performance. They found that, quote, THC's effects on road tracking after doses up to 300, whatever that is, never exceeded alcohol's BACs of 0.08% and were in no way unusual compared to many medical drugs, medicinal drugs. The researchers also noted that, quote, THC seems to differ qualitatively from many other drugs and that the users seem to better able to compensate for its adverse effects while driving under the influence. Um, hard to, you know, break that down, but basically it's saying you, if you did get just fresh out of taking a massive dab hit and then you wait for the, the initial like star field to fade off and your, your heartbeat slows back down to normal after that, you know, you basically compensate for your, stoneness somehow i got i think they might be talking about driving a little slower or something i don't know in 1997 a study into crash characteristics and injuries of victims was published in the journal of accidental accident analysis and prevention and found that alcohol was more of a problem on the roads than all illegal drugs combined now just keep that in mind always because they're always trying to make it sound like people are out there on the road just you know having a fucking drug party like they're, they're like an automobile is like a it's like a fucking 60s basement on wheels or something like it's just not the case guys there's not like this huge amount of people out there driving even on prescription meds it's just not happening or even you know like people shooting heroin and driving around or it's just it's not a fucking big epidemic alcohol drunk driving is still a big problem and it has gone down a lot since they haven't stepped up enforcement in the last 30 years, but it's still a major issue. Alcohol is clearly the major drug associated with serious crashes and great injury. Patients testing positive for illicit drugs, marijuana, opiates, and cocaine in the absence of alcohol were in crashes very similar to those patients with neither alcohol nor drugs. These drugs were not associated with more severe crashes or greater injury. In essence, I think what you're talking about is when you're fucking on alcohol, you don't 
you should not be driving, all right? It's it's super dangerous. And passing out at the wheel is one of the major reasons for these horrendous crashes that leave people dead and cars mangled and shit. In 1998, a British House of Lords Select Committee on Science and Technology issued a report on cannabis and driving. Their studies found that, quote, the impairment in driving skills does not appear to be severe even immediately after taking cannabis when subjects are tested in a driving simulator. <clears throat> so that kind of busts my argument that even right after you hit the joint or do the dab, you're still going to drive pretty decently and you're going to be a little bit paranoid, so you're going to be way more careful. In 1999, the University of Toronto researcher Allison Smiley did a, quote, meta-analysis of studies into cannabis and driving. She concluded that research... Or recent research into impairment and traffic accident reports from several countries show that marijuana taken alone in moderate amounts does not significantly increase a driver's risk of causing an accident, unlike alcohol. And that's why we have such strict rules on alcohol. And like, you know, yeah, you drink one beer, you might blow a breathalyzer because you might be impaired. Two beers, you'll get a 0 0.08. Most people's body weight, you'll get that. And... <clears throat> I'm telling you, man, alcohol, you can, everybody knows this. Why has this got to be retaught to everybody? Alcohol is like the only substance that we got that is something that people use recreational as a fucking way to, to get high, whatever you want to call it, that fucks you up like that. You can't walk on that shit. You can't talk. You drink enough of it and you won't even know what's going on. Yeah. Driving a car, fucking definitely out of the question, but Somehow they're making it feel like marijuana gets you that fucked up. It doesn't. All right. If you're somebody out there that don't smoke weed and you don't plan on it, let me just emphasize to you that there is no way that you can get that fucked up on weed. There's no amount of weed you can take. As a matter of fact, the more weed you take, the closer to just falling asleep you get. And most people don't want to get there. So they know the dose of weed that they need to get where they need to be without getting sleepy. And it's nowhere as near fucking being dangerous to drive a car. <sighs> Smiley added a pointed commentary. There is an assumption that because marijuana is illegal, it must increase the risk of an accident. We should try to just stick to the facts. See, the problem is, is because it's illegal, people think all the bad things they've been told about it. And they don't know what to think about it if they've never smoked weed. Or, oh, does it fuck you up behind the wheel? Probably. It's so demonized by the government it must be bad it must fuck you no that's alcohol you've learned to accept that you got somebody in your family that probably got in an alcohol related car crash because that's how common it is and you don't even fucking care you're like oh yeah he's a piece of shit drunk but you don't realize that they're they're basically putting people that smoke weed patients even that drive well after smoking weed at some point and it could be up to 30 days afterwards in some states then you get tested positive in a zero tolerance situation. Next thing you know it, boom, you got a ticket just like you're a fucking drunk driver. Another study into the role of cannabis and motor vehicle crashes published in epidemiology, epidemi, <laughs> epidemiologic, uh, logic. All right, I'm sorry. I'm tongue twister this morning. Not doing too good at reading. <clears throat> in 1999, and found that cannabis users may even have a reduced risk of accidents. Researchers concluded that there is no evidence that consumption of cannabis alone increases the risk of culpability for traffic crash, fatalities, or injuries, and may reduce those risks. And let's not forget, man, when analyzing the data where they say that there was an increase in cannabis-related crashes in Colorado and Washington State, it's because they tested people which they never did before anyway. So now all of a sudden, every time there's a fatal crash, everybody in the car gets tested, everybody in both cars or whatever. Next thing you know it, oh, this guy was in a fatal crash, marijuana in his system, he was stone driving, or they just chalk it up. This guy could have smoked weed a month ago, guys. So we're, sick, we're, we're just sick of these studies coming out trying to act like this is some kind of a new phenomenon also. If stone driving was a big deal, we'd already fucking know about it. Because guess what? Ever since cars were invented, people have been stone driving. You better believe it. And it's never been a problem.
In 2002, a study into cannabis and alcohol and motor vehicle accidents found that cannabis users were no more likely to cause accidents than non-users. In cases in which THC was the only drug present, the culpability ratio was found to be not significantly different from the no drug group. They don't cause accidents, guys. People smoking weed, they're not causing accidents. We even heard that in the Rocky Mountain study, people that were in the other car that weren't even the fault, it wasn't even their fault. Like the person at fault caused the accident and then the other driver had cannabis in their system, THC positive test, could have been zero nan one nanogram because they have a zero tolerance uh, in the study. They, they still chalked it up. Oh, there's a stone driver in a fatal crash. Oh yeah, well, it doesn't matter that he was the guy that died and the fucker wasn't even at fault. <laughs> Canada's Senate released a massive report into all aspects of cannabis in 2002. In regards to driving, they concluded that, quote, cannabis leads to a more cautious style of driving. Well, then Canada, but Canada yet has the most zero tolerance situation that I can mention. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> that was 2002, guys. 15 years ago, you figured it out. Now you're going back on that? Whatever. Anyway, the senators also noted that cannabis alone, particularly in low doses, has little effect on the skills involved with automobile driving. The Senate concluded cannabis alone, particularly in low doses, has little effect on the skills involved with yeah, we, uh, redundancy police. In 2007, the Canadian Journal of Public Health reviewed several studies into the impact of cannabis on driving. They found that the severe impact of alcohol on driving abilities are well beyond what was what has been shown with cannabis. 2010 study into cannabis and driving printed in the Journal of Psychoactive Drugs showed that, quote, no differences were found during the baseline driving segment or collision avoidance scenarios and concluded that, quote, driving performance was not correlated with highness. So the higher you get, you are still driving just the same is what that means. In case you're kind of like still trying to figure that one out. A study done in 2012 by the Journal of Analytical Toxicology found that even large doses of cannabis produce less impairment than legal levels of alcohol, concluding that there were only minimal performance changes in critical thinking and divided attention tasks after smoking 700 something kilo per kilogram THC. These findings support those uh, documenting minimal impairment in driving related uh, psychomotor tasks in chronic daily cannabis users. In 2013, a study into medical marijuana laws, traffic fatalities, and alcohol consumption published in the Journal of Law and Economics showed that legal cannabis means safer roads. They found that the first full year after coming into effect, legalization is associated with 8 to 11% decrease in traffic fatalities. The study also found that legalization is associated with a sharp decrease in alcohol consumption, which suggests that marijuana and alcohol are substitutes. The study justified this assertion by including that in, quote, the first full year after coming into effect, legalization is associated with an 8 to 11 percent decrease in traffic fatalities. In 2016, study in American Journal of Public Health confirmed that cannabis access means less traffic accidents, showing that medical marijuana laws were associated with immediate reductions in traffic fatalities. Dispensaries were also associated with traffic fatality reductions in those aged 25 to 44 years old. A 2015 study by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Guys, this is the actual government, all right? I know we don't believe them because they use propaganda and fucking just pound us all the time with fake stats and bullshit studies, but this is one of theirs. And it found that cannabis caused much less impairment than alcohol, concluding that alcohol but not marijuana increased the number of times the car actually left the lane and the speed of the weaving. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration also analyzed accident patterns and found that, quote, drivers who tested positive for marijuana were no more likely to crash than those who had not used any drugs or alcohol prior to driving. Can't stress that one enough. <clears throat> In 2016, the American Automobile Association studied the data on cannabis and driving and concluded that there were no correlation between blood THC concentration and scores on individual impairment indicators. 
legal limits, known as per se limits, for marijuana and driving are arbitrary and unsupported by science. Uh, that's all I got on this, man. I think I, <laughs> I, think I put all, all my commentary forward as I was reading it. And yeah, basically, this is basically the, one of the best, uh, my go-to article when it comes to this argument. And I don't know what's going on with this browser crashing out on me. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. I think that was uh, pretty much there. We go. Pretty much uh, all you need to know about the science behind these outrageous claims that somehow marijuana in your system means you're a fucking bad driver. You're not a safe driver. You're gonna be distracted. Um, all the reasons you get in a car crash. The top ones are you got your sleeping while driving and then you got your distracted driving and alcohol driving or neck and neck. Below that, you you know, you'd be surprised to know that impairment by drugs alone barely even makes the pie chart. <laughs> it doesn't even fucking look like anything on the pie chart. So the whole idea that Legalizing marijuana in Colorado and Washington's caused some kind of fucking crash epidemic of stone drivers is just fucking laughable on its face. <laughs>